Got a really tough job, but have a really good road tennis. Go for it. Knock him off the perch. Have a great one. So day two of Henley and the regatta sees Teddy's back in action from their round of 16 bout and they're up against King's School Chester this afternoon. Teddy's who've done really well yesterday to beat Norwich School are now off and underway and a long way to go but a good start from Johnny Singsfield's crew as they plough their way down this beautiful expanse of water the river thames looks beautiful today a little overcast the conditions but the crowd ready to cheer them on and uh, teddy's feeling confident seeing some of the guys ahead of the race they look to be focused but they also look to be relaxed as well and they'll be in fine form and rare and raring to go and book their place in that last date as well it's the second round of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup. So we're on the Buck Station, three quarters of a length lead for St Edwards at the moment. And uh, that would be a, a comfortable feeling for Johnny Singfield at the moment. He's feeling pretty good about life. And that crew of eight, let's just talk us uh, through that crew of eight. Titus Morley in the stroke seat, man of Cow's House, upper sixth, just finished his A-levels. And he'll be stroking that side all the way through now up to one of the first marker posts and uh, they look to be in good position at the moment the results Teddy's of the Thames Challenge Cup Green in Lake confident Crew, form at America. the moment. Morley Sixth in the stroke seat, Callum Jones behind him, and Ollie Knight, the lower sixth man Nine from Sings. Sam McDonald Smith and Albert Mitchell form the middle of that uh, crew with Sam Gilling and Mikey Dix, Sam Baring uh, right in the bow. And uh, they're a pretty formidable crew, actually. They've uh, come second in the national schools this year, looking to go one better this year. Abingdon stand in the way, as of course do any other crews who they should meet on the way to the final but Abingdon fancied to do very well but Ted is in the lead here by half a length Morley is uh, stroking them beautifully down this race at the moment one minute 56 it took them to get to the mile post and uh, Kings Chester, who beat Shiplake in the first round yesterday, but uh, not expected to cause Teddy's problem. Hugo Marsh, absolutely fifth former, just completed his GCSEs. He'll be uh, guiding the guys through their paces at the moment. Teddy's on the buck side and uh, looking comfortable enough at the moment. Bigger challenges await them. And here they go now looking nice on this overcast afternoon plenty of teddy support here uh, plenty of upper six who finished their exams a few weeks ago are here 33 is the rate at the moment from titus morley as he takes us through two and a half lengths it's a comfortable enough margin at the moment johnny singfield will be pleased with this he was predicting a, a quite a titanic struggle for his guys coming into this race but they're looking good with Morley leading the way. Of course, he's um, represented Great Britain at age group level, along with Callum Jones and Ollie Knight, really good up and coming oarsman. Lower sixth, he'll be taking the lead next year. He's the only lower sixth actually in this boat with Morley and Callum Jones, Sam McDonald Smith, Mikey Dixon, Sam Baring all leaving. Knight will be the man in the upper sixth next year, but with uh, Albert Mitchell and Sam Gillingham in the lower sixth. They're now at 32 strokes a minute. And they lead by two and a half lengths. So that's looking very comfortable. And uh, Johnny Singfield, well, he won't be relaxing just yet, but he'll be feeling pretty confident as the blue blades enter the water in synchronicity. It's a wonderful sight seeing a rowing boat powering its way towards you, bearing at the back, looking composed, and those two banks of four blades looking extremely comfortable now. Teddy's on their way. They look nervous before the, the, the race started but focus too and there'll be plenty of people in that crowd who'll be willing Teddy's on to a victory two and a half lengths is the distance at the moment between the two crews the white singlets glistening I wouldn't say quite in the sunshine because the daylight is cloudy but Teddy's very comfortable now crescendo from the crowd just down in front of us and they've made really good work of this here come Teddy's now with Hugo Marsh barking the orders past the grandstand you can hear the crescendo of noise and this is an impressive effort here from Johnny Singsfield's side 
Titus Morley, Callum Jones, Ollie Knight, Sam McDonald Smith, Albert Mitchell, Sam Gillingham, Mikey Dixon, Sam Bering power their way through and they're coming up to the finishing line now and that is a terrific effort from the Teddy's crew. Bigger challenges await but they're through to the next round. The blades go up in the air, they can pat each other on the back. Job done here on day two of the Henley Royal Regatta. Dix looks exhausted, Gillingham too. And the three cheers come in for the opposition. Hello guys. How was that then? Because it seemed to be a very comfortable victory for you. Yeah, we're, the sort of not easy race yesterday, but solid. We could sort of wind it down. Not too much lactic acid, but then today it was sort of a full-on race. We went for it all the way to the barrier. And then Forley, we were still sort of on it. Put our pushes in all the way down. And then we were sort of able to not. We had to keep it on, but not put the pushes in in the second half. So. In terms of how you felt at the start, just describe your feelings because you know, Teddy's expected to do well in this regatta. Yeah. Uh, it's the 150th anniversary. Do you, do you, are you guys feeling pressure? You all seem very calm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe some of the younger lads, but I've done quite some quite high pressure stuff. So. I'm not feeling it as much as others, I don't think, but I mean, everyone deals with it differently. So, do you, do you try and advise some of the younger ones? Your yeah, Albert well, Mitchells, your Sam Gillingham. Yeah, I try, but everyone's got their own way, haven't they? So, and what was the best part of that race from 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 you got from your guys' point of view? Was it the start? Yeah, a good start on that race. And is that something you're really focusing on at the moment? The start. Yeah, we're, the sort of the last few weeks have been aimed on that and just dealing with lactic acid and because we were pretty rubbish at that start of the year, and then I think we've definitely improved on that. So. And, and what now for you guys? There's a bit of sort of, you're not quite sure what time you're rowing tomorrow, you're not quite sure who you're rowing against. Yeah. Does that indecision, how does, does that sort of play on your mind a bit, or do you just sort of, look, when it happens, it happens? Well, we sort of ticked the box yesterday, and we ticked the box today, take a couple of hours winding down, get the recovery going, and then we'll start worrying about it. There's no point in worrying about it now, there's nothing you can do, so. And when you say winding down, what sort of stuff are you are so you guys doing? We've just done 10 minutes on the ergo, just getting some, just to get the muscles moving again, getting some food in, uh, probably go for a walk in a bit as well, just get everything moving and keep it moving so nothing can seize up. Very, very sharp start. They, they really have got it together. Uh, they dominated right from the first stroke and it was clear really from about a minute in that they were not going to be beaten. How important was that start today? I think from the point of view of the crew, it's, it's, it gives them a huge confidence if they can get away cleanly um, to execute the, uh, the, the start profile that they've been practicing all these months. Uh, to get that right, I think, really sets you up well for the rest of the course. They look very focused, the guys at the moment. There's quite a bit of pressure on them, 150th anniversary. Mm. Everyone thinks yeah. they're going to do well. Yeah. Quite hard for them to handle, I would imagine, but they're handling it really well at the moment. They are. They are. They're very focused. They're taking nothing for granted. They have all due respect for every crew they race, and they don't assume they're going to go out and win it. They know that they have to earn that victory. What do they do now? Because they'll have another race tomorrow. They don't know what time that is. Yep. In terms of preparation, it must be quite hard until you actually know that's the time that I'm on. Well, that's right. I mean, that's something that Johnny, Johnny Singfield, the coach, has to manage with them. Um, and so the key thing now is to get warmed down, to get the lactate out of the system, uh, to then get some food inside them. So they're, they're restocking the batteries for tomorrow. Um, and then they just have to be patient, chill out this afternoon, um, go back and relax and wait for the timing this evening. Uh, and then Johnny can then set the uh, set the plan for the next day. And as master in charge of rowing, this is your your swan song, John. It Are you is. enjoying it? I, I'm loving every minute of it. It's been absolutely tremendous. Sam, that looked really easy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Tell us about the race from your point of view. Because um, you look very calm and focused. Yeah, well, uh, we, it was a race that we kind of should win. I mean, we can't underestimate any of our opponents, but that was one that we that we needed to win if we're coming here to do what we think we can do. 
and uh, yeah, so we, all the whole plan was to go really hard off the start, see where we were, and uh, keep the race plan going as long as as long as needed. And it was needed for, for quite a considerable amount of the race. So, what was the plan? The plan is to go off really quickly, yeah. really physically, and then what? Can you can you ease up towards the end, or, um, or not go well, as you, hard? We don't think about easing up, easing up before the race. I mean, if. Uh, we don't think about that because that means we're underestimating our opponents and so the, the race plan is in there full and then the Cox is it's his discretion to say actually guys we don't need this push just just relax a little bit just let it flow and uh, and hold them there just kind of control the race from the front where you can see them what goes through your head because you've got quite a row you you come out here you've got to row all the way up to the start <laughs> and then yeah. you've got the sort of presumably a few minutes where you're you're nervous and you're yeah. waiting what's what's that like from your point of view are you quiet are you noisy what do, what well, do you the do the row up's actually really useful to get get back in the boat just us in the boat together without all this hoo-ha going on and uh, get warmed up get ready for the race and then uh, we actually timed it a bit better today yesterday we went out a bit too early and we did all our warm-up and then we were waiting for quite a while and that's when the nerves really set in when you're not doing anything but today we timed it better we did the warm-up finish and then went straight back onto the start and what are those first 10 strokes like are they pretty insane because <laughs> you're pretty because manic, you're really yeah. the, la the lactic acid starts building up exactly well. well that hits at the end of the island really the, the first uh, we do a kind of sprint phase up to about 18 strokes and that's that's really it's really chaotic and you've and you can hear the the opposite boat next to you and it's really loud and it's um, you just got to focus my my head my head is I mean my eyes are just squared on Ollie's the back of Ollie's head that's all I got to think about make sure I get my blade in at the right time and um, to just go for it and then don't we don't think about where we are in the race until until after the start phase and when you hit the grandstand there's yeah. thousands of people there yeah. and Teddy's got a huge support here yeah, what's that great. like does that give you a bit of a morale boost when you hear them uh, yeah it is well we just it kind of makes you think okay make sure we get it right let's look good um, I mean the last couple of days we haven't been <laughs> we haven't been really going for it. we haven't needed the encouragement just to to make us win the race because we're in a controlling position but uh, yeah hopefully if we get further in the week we'll definitely when we get some and what about the pressure because it's like play 2-1-2 two, two now but, yeah. you know everyone's saying that that's probably what should have happened how are you dealing with, with that sort of the pressure element well, it's, a, it's a massive cliche but we're really just taking it one race at a time I sound like a football manager but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's just what you have to do we can't we can't look too far ahead speculate about who's going to win which races just got to we beat the next people that are lined up against us and then take it like that and what now for you how do you how do you how does the next few hours pan out because you don't know who you're rowing against no until later well, on we're, you don't know what time you're rowing we've got to get you know food and fluid in we're just on a cool down there goes um get the recovery going probably go for a walk together talk about the race and then uh, watch a bit of the racing there's a bit of a blockbuster later radley against oratory i mean no sorry radley against st paul's and then oratory against the germans uh, a bit later on we won't be able to make that and uh yeah, go back to where we're staying and uh, chill out. And just for those who are unin uninitiated in this, how important is Hugo Marsh, Bill Cox, in all of this? Key, absolutely. Yeah, especially in a race like that when uh, when there's kind of quite a lot of tactics going on. I mean, he has to steer a straight line. He has to give all the calls. He has to tell us if if someone's getting something wrong technically, he finds it, points it out, and corrects it. I mean, that, he's really, really good at that. And he's he's basically our coach in the boat all the way through the race. I mean. Uh, Johnny likes to wait in the tent, doesn't want to jinx anything. So Hugo is really, it's like having an onboard coach. And, and also the tactical call saying, yeah, you can relax it now or not <laughs> if you need to go again. And we just have to listen to him. We say Hugo's word is law and you just do what he says, commit to what he says.